Welcome to children's worship. Thank you so much for coming. You know. And today, we have an important word that will be in our lesson. An important word. It's not. Are you ready to find out what it is? You'll never guess it. You'll never, ever guess it. <laughs> Let's get Sebastian comfortable. I asked him before we turned this on, did I not? If he was comfortable? But not quite yet. Are you comfortable now? Ah, uh, you look very comfortable. Good. Very nice. We'll get him whatever he needs. All right. The word for today's lesson is remember. What? 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 Not that, but never was Now, let's say the word together once. Look at me, Fred. Frederick. One, two, three. Remember. Remember. Good. Now, before we start with our Bible story, I want to take a moment to ask you to remember. And here's what you're going to do. The people we will learn about today remembered something very important, something very happy, something that filled their hearts with joy. I want you to close your eyes very quietly and think of the most best day that you ever had, your happiest memory of all time, or the very best thing that ever happened to you. Just think of it quietly in your head with your eyes closed now. I don't know. Oh my goodness, Fred, shush, quiet, close eyes, think. Don't raise your hands, don't raise your hands. Close your eyes. If you have no happy memories, I am sorry. Just, just try. Oh, good. So they're all the best. So you may choose any of them, Fisher. Anyone. Perfect. That's easy. Should be easy, right? Close those eyes and think. Now, I don't know if a lot of thinking happened there because all I heard was a lot of talking, but if you would like to share your very best of all time memory, you may open your eyes now and raise your hand. Sebastian, comfortable Sebastian. What is your all time best memory? Oh, that's great. No, that, that counts. Aiden. Oh, do you have more? Yeah. Oh, there's more. Wait, Aiden, there is more. Go ahead, Bess. So, for Noah's 10th birthday, uh -huh. he went to this place, this, like, huge, fancy indoor water park. Oh, gosh. It's called Key Lime Cove. I think it was in, like, Sweden or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's called Key Lime Cove. Okay. Because you were already there. And then we were so early that there were like no lines, so we could like go on the ride forever. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> and then we like eight o'clock. Oh, and then great. We like had like, there's like a big arcade at the other part of it, and then we did that. Okay. Yeah, and then we did that. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Okay, we're going to Aiden. Thank you, Bass. Aiden. The time your brother was born. That's so great. And you remember that pretty well? Yeah. Okay, that's really good. Uh, best all-time memory, Mabel. Um, today? Today? Um, I'm going to get a unicorn because I stopped stuck in my stock. Oh, so you're both very proud of yourself, and you get something special that you're looking forward to. That's awesome, Mabel. Uh, no. Uh, like, I have lots of other ones, but one of my favorite ones is uh, moving to first grade. Moving to first grade, okay. Who's your teacher this year? Uh, Me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. boy. All right. Oh, uh, oh, boy, this is hard. Owen. Um, well, I have two. Okay. Uh, Francisco Lindor hit a home run. 
Oh, wow. Wow. And you're a Cleveland Indians fan, right? Yes. So that makes that very important. Yeah. And the other one is that it's, it's similar to Sebastian's where we, I was at Rayful Lodge, uh, Lodge and it like we were, got there so early there was no one. So we just like, there was no lines or anything. Oh, that's great. Is this part of the bed? It is, it is amazing when you don't have to wait in line, right? It's like the craziest rides have like two people in line. <laughs> yeah. Okay. James, do you have a memory? I have three. And one of them was, so like the last weekend I went to a hotel. Okay, you went to a hotel. That's very fun. The super fun water park. Oh my goodness. Okay. And we got to go to it, and that was one. And then my second one was, <clears throat> so like when I was like at my grandpa and grandma's cabin, we had a boat there, and I went fishing with my cousin. Okay. Is the cabin in Wisconsin? Yes. Okay. And what about the third one? Uh, I forgot. Okay, that's fine. Okay, we're going to stop because that's all the time we have for memories, but this is awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. And after being here, I feel like I need to get to a water park or a hotel or a baseball game early. right away and early. Be the first one there is the good advice, right? Yeah. First in line. Okay. But should you just wait until they're open or something? Because well, they don't open really early. Thanks for the advice, Fred. Now, two weeks ago, those of you who were here, we talked about God's special people, the family of Abraham, the nation of Israel, whom God promised would be a blessing to the whole earth. How many of you were here when we met two weeks ago? Raise your hand if you were. Raise your hand if you were here two weeks ago. Okay, get those hands up. Let me see them. There are no stopping. Just the hand, please. Okay. Those of you who are here are going to answer two questions for me in unison. That means instead of shouting it out, we're going to say the answers all together. Okay? Here are your two questions. Are you ready? Okay. What terrible thing happened to God's people in Egypt. Ah, uh, all together. Are you guys ready? One, two, three. Right. right. Now, Bass, you're not wearing a mask. You need to put one on. Thank you. You don't have a mask? I do. Where? Okay. Um, is that actually a mask? Okay, good. Get it up. Augie, you have a mask on already, right? Okay, take your shirt off your face, Augie. Bass, your mask can't cover the whole head. You're too safe. Too safe. All right. You guys know this is on video, right? Okay, now there's flossing. Barbuses, why is there always flossing? No, sit down. <laughs> All right. Let's try again with our two questions from last week. Are you ready? Everyone got the right answer. We're just going to say it again because we had that very hilarious distraction. God's people, when they were in Egypt, the terrible thing that happened to them was that they were slaves. slaves. And the next question is, what was the name of the special baby from our lesson that week. Let's say it together. His name was? I'm afraid nobody understood that. I, maybe they did, but let's say it one more time. One, two, three. Good. All right, listen up. 
When Moses was an adult, God appeared to him through a burning bush. And God told Moses that he had heard the suffering of his people who were slaves, slaves in Egypt. God said that Moses would go to Pharaoh and tell him to let them go. James, I'm so sorry, no questions right now. Hold on, okay? Do you think Pharaoh would agree to give up all of his slaves? No, no, no. Well, Moses didn't think so either. He didn't think this was going to work. And you know what? He was right. Pharaoh did not agree. Not at first. And so to get Pharaoh to change his mind, to get Pharaoh to change his mind, and you know Pharaoh, he's the king of Egypt, right? You guys know that? That's just a word for king, Pharaoh. To get him to change his mind and let all of God's people who were slaves go, God sent plagues against the land of Egypt. Right, and we are going to read about those plagues, and I am going to show you some pictures. I know all the plagues because I watched the movie of Moses. Which movie did you watch, James? The first one. The first one. Okay, was it a cartoon or was it real? Real. Real, well, okay. It wasn't real, I just watched like. But it had real people in it? Well, it didn't have real people. Oh. It just had like. But it probably actually happened. Was it live action? Was it live action? Do you even know what live action is? Yeah. All right, movie making is next week. For now, sit down. Fisher, take a seat. So because Pharaoh said no, God told Moses to strike the water, just like James said, right, of the Nile River and turn it into blood. Um, Moses read, shh, Owen, God, I have to be able to see some of your face. Thank you. <laughs> Augie, Fisher. Augie, the mask has to stay on. Thank you. Is everyone ready? Because we are going to read a story from the Gospel Story Bible about the plagues. And then, I'm going to wait. Fred, turn around, look at me. We don't have very much time, and we have a lot to do. So I need you to get your attention back to me. Brad and Noel, Graham. All right, this is better. Owen, turn around. Now, the first plague was God turned the water of the Nile River red. But it wasn't just the color red. It was actual blood. Really gross, right? Because then there was no water to drink, and that would surely make Pharaoh change his mind and let God's people go. What did it work? No. No. Seven days later, God sent Moses back to Pharaoh, and Moses said, Thus says the Lord, let my people go. If not, I will fill your country with. How many of you like frogs? I mean, I've seen a lot on the nature board a lot. Right. How many of you would like to have them in your bed or in your food? No, 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 no. Or slip on one when you're walking. It is. Nobody wants it. Uh-uh. Okay, Bass, I'm sorry, we just don't have time, but I'm sh uh, maybe later. Again, Pharaoh refused, so Moses turned to Aaron and said, stretch out your staff over the rivers, canals, and pools. Oh, that was still the frogs. Frogs everywhere. They came out of the rivers, the canals, the pools. Next plague. Next, God sent a plague of? What's that? Good, Mary. Gnats. How did you know these were gnats? Do you just know your plagues, or are you good at recognizing insects? Good. 
fantastic. Good job, Mary. Now, gnats are tiny little bugs. They might not seem like a big deal, right? But they attacked the Egyptians, and they left all of God's people, the Israelites, alone. Pharaoh tried to bargain with Moses. He said, well, I'll let you guys go for a little bit to have some sacrifices, and then you must come back. And Moses said, that's not the deal. And Pharaoh said, no, I won't let God's people go. Well, that's because, well, I don't think he really likes frogs. The man. Lord brought plague after plague to Egypt. God sent flies. It looked like bees. Yeah. All of the Egyptians' animals died. Yeah, it's awful. People were sick with terrible sores on their skin. There were hailstorms. And then, it hailed on me yesterday. Yeah, it did, Noel, but that was teeny tiny hail. This was really big hail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or even bigger. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Are you ready for the next one? God sent swarms of locusts, very hungry locusts, like grasshoppers, and they ate everything in sight, everything that was green, everything that could feed a family, every crop nibbled down and gone. They have no food, no water. How are they surviving? I don't know. It was a bad time, Owen. Next. Darkness. Darkness. Covered the land. Darkness covered the land. But in spite of this, Pharaoh would not listen. Again and again, he hardened his heart. He kept trying to bargain with Moses. But he, when Moses refused, Pharaoh told him to leave and never return. Pharaoh said, if you don't get out of here, you're going to die. And there was only one plague left. And that brings us to our lesson today. Wait. After this plague, God said that Pharaoh would obey. Wait, what's the plague? Moses went to Pharaoh with a warning. At midnight, every firstborn in the land of Egypt will die. From the firstborn of you, Pharaoh, on the throne, yeah. to the firstborn of all the slaves, and even the firstborn, Fred, of all the animals. There will be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there has never been, and such as there will never be again. But even though he was warned, Pharaoh hardened his heart, and he would not let God's people go. What? Owen, what is it? Wait, I thought it was the oldest son. Uh, Augie, Firstborn Augie. son. Augie. You're right. Augie. Fred, turn around. Augie, that head, I need to see at least some of your face, okay? And everyone turn around. I can see him, Fred. Come on. So that was the deal for the people of Egypt and for Pharaoh. But God said something different to his people, the Israelites, the Jewish people. God said to Moses, tell the people of Israel to choose a lamb for their household. Then take a little of the lamb's blood and put it on the doorpost of your house. Eat the lamb's meat roasted on fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Eat it quickly and be dressed to travel. I think I'm getting some. Then God said, 
Every firstborn in Egypt will die tonight, but when I see the blood on your door, I will pass over your home. This plague will not destroy you. Remember this day forever. There's our word. What word? What's our word today? Remember. Yes, God said, remember this day forever. Celebrate with a feast. This day, this day will be a memorial day and every generation to come will keep it as a Passover feast. So the people of Israel did. They must remember it. Right. So the people of Israel did as the Lord commanded before night came. At midnight, this one's hard to see. Let's put it right up to the camera. Here it is. Do you see the blood? Can you guys see the blood on the door frame, the door post? Yes. Yes. And this is called the lintel of the door. Augie, you need to stay in your seat. Everyone needs to stay seated. All right, sit down. Okay. At midnight, the firstborn in the land of Egypt died. The firstborn of Pharaoh died. The firstborn of the prisoners in the dungeon died. And all of the firstborn of all of the animals died. And everyone in Egypt woke up and cried. A great cry was heard in Egypt because in every house someone had died. But in the houses of God's people, where lamb's blood was on the doors, the oldest children were saved. The homes of the people of Israel had been passed over. Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron in the middle of the night, and he said, get up and get out of here at once. And so the people of Israel journeyed out of Egypt. How they must have rejoiced. God had rescued them from slavery, and next God would keep his promise and lead them to the promised land. And they remembered the day. They remember it still celebrating Passover. The Jewish people still celebrate Passover. Everyone remembers it. Everyone remembers it. Even we do, right? Because this story is important not just to people who are Jewish, people whose long, 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 very old relatives died during these times, right? It's important for us too today. So let's take a second to think about why this is still important now and why it's important not just to the people of Israel, but also to us, okay? We're going to do that by answering some questions and thinking back on the story that you just heard. My first question, and one person, raise your hand and I'll call on you, is what is slavery? Oh boy, Owen. Uh, slavery is if someone they like um someone is not paid to work for you and they work pretty much at, like all the time they, and they they would get transported from their families and they would not they would be hurt bad or they would be like. Well. Yep. Great answer. That's I'm right. Mm -hmm. Yep. You weren't only working really hard. You, Fred's right. To, that's what Owen described. You're really harmed, right? So God's people who were in slavery called out to him desperately for help, right? And God did hear their call and send Moses to help them. Bye, then we're what did Moses? Yeah, it did. What it did? What did Moses say to Pharaoh? Okay, Mary has the answer. We're gonna listen, and she's gonna say it again. Next time, raise your hand just so that no one else talks. Okay, go ahead, Mary. Very good. Let God says, "Let my people go." Right? Because they were Moses's people. They sort of were, but they were really God's people. Right? Mm-hmm. Okay, 
And what did Pharaoh say back? No, no, no. <laughs> All right, raise your hand if you know the answer to this one. Why didn't Pharaoh want to let God's people go? Why, Fisher? Why did he like having slaves? Uh, they, did the work. they did the work for free. I they were building cities. I they were raising be... fields of crops. I he... thought it would be because of his dad. Well, you know what, Fred? That's probably not entirely wrong. But there were many reasons Pharaoh did not want to let God's people go. Okay? He definitely didn't. No matter what happened, frogs, gnats, darkness, hail, he said no. I mean, darkness, how would they work? Yeah. They I mean, if there's flies, then... Well, I'm surprised there's no one drought. Or... Right? These are good questions. So, what do you think the people of Israel thought and so, felt as they saw these terrible things happen God, basically... to the land of Egypt? What did they think? What did the people of Israel think when they saw these plagues happening in the land of Egypt? These plagues that we still talk about today, we remember every single one of them, right? We remember these. What did the people of Israel think? Hazel. Maybe they felt sorry for Egypt. Oh, sure. They probably did. Some of them, yes, probably felt oh, bad. Yeah. What else? Fred, sit still. What, Fisher? Okay, say that again. Okay. That's true. Right. Things, yeah. Things did become very sad. What do you think? Let me change the question just a tiny bit. What do you think the people of Israel thought? about God when they saw the plagues that God was bringing on the land of Egypt. What do you think they thought about God? Owen? Um, well, they thought that obviously they, he, um, they thought that God would destroy them and they would have to worship God. Mm, okay, let's stop right there, okay? So in the land of Egypt, they worshiped tons of gods, right? This was a sign that those gods were not real and all of the people of Israel and even the people in Egypt saw that one God was real, right? And super powerful over all nature, right? So when you know those things about God, when you think about God and you know he's real, and you know he's super powerful over nature or over even the problems we have, what do you think about God? Okay, does it make you think about why it's important to worship God, why it's great to belong to God, why we glorify God, why um, we can trust him when we're in trouble? Does it make you think about any of those things? Do you think when the people of Israel saw these plagues, they felt both a little afraid and a little amazed and a li maybe even a little more safe? Yeah, they thought that God would save them. Okay, next. Um, in this story, we find part of the way that God kept his promise to all of the people we reviewed a couple weeks ago, to Abraham, to Jacob, to Joseph. How did God keep his promise? What did he do in this lesson that reminds us of how he kept his promise? Hazel. Okay, say that again. Well, right, but something happened to God's people, right, at the end of the story that was part, a very important part of God keeping his promise to Abraham, to Jacob, to Joseph. What is it, Fred? They were saved. They were saved. They were set free. They were going to the promised land, right, Mabel? And this was how God was saving his people. He promised to be with them. He promised they would be a great nation. And he got them out of slavery so that those things could come true. 
right? Now, in our Bibles, in John 1 29, there is a verse that says, behold, lots of verses start with behold, right? Okay, listen up. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. What lamb, we had a lamb in our lesson. What lamb is this verse about? Jesus! Right. So why do you think Jesus was called a lamb by the people who always remembered to celebrate how God saved them during Passover? Why was Jesus called a lamb. Hazel. Because the lamb's blood saved them during Passover. Because the lamb's blood saved them during Passover. Great. Owen? Well, also because it was, it was a perfect, uh, it was a perfect lamb. Because it was perfectly white, it was, it was young, and yep. it was perfect. So that's why, because Jesus is perfect, that's why they would. Right. So there are, are several ways that Jesus and this lamb are alike. They were perfect, and they both gave their blood so that we could be saved, right? Jesus becomes the new lamb to save all of God's people. This is what's important to remember. And we remember something in church each Sunday. What is it that we remember? And what do we do to remember? Do you ever hear the word remember? When you're at church, yes. Yes. what are we doing when we remember? I remember. Okay, um, Owen, what is it? Well, two no. things really. Okay, two things. Um, and when we worship him, uh, when we worship God, but also you would hear a lot in the sermon. If okay. You when I listen to the sermon, you hear it like 20 times. Okay, wow. great. So just by coming to church, we're doing a lot of remembering in what we hear and how we worship God. Great answer. How else do we remember God each Sunday in church? Hazel. Uh, we do communion. We do communion. Our remembrance of the Last Supper. Right, and there's that word again, right? What do we say during communion, Hazel? With the word remember in it? Uh, you just said it in... Right, in remembrance of me. That's right. Why is it so important for us to come to church because and to remember what Jesus did for us? Why do you think God wants us to remember? Just like God wanted the people of Israel to remember how he saved them from slavery, why does he want us here today to remember? What do you think? Our Fred. Okay, but what, what matters about us remembering? Why should we remember? Owen? Uh, we should remember because, well, God has, it's, well, it's the word of God, or word of, the, word of the Lord, and we should remember because he's, he's um, perfect, and should, we should worship, worship his word and what does that do for us? When we remember, what does it do for us? Hazel? Oh, that it's time to go? Yes, Fisher, are you going to answer it? We are almost done. I just want one answer to this question. When we come to church, when we take communion, when we think about Passover, when we go through these Bible lessons, when we remember these things, what does that do for us? We remember God, and we remember that He saved the Okay, and that matters. It matters that we remember God. It matters that we remember that He saved the Israelites from slavery, from the Egyptians, because then we know that He will keep His promise to us, right? To save us. And that we, Hazel, go ahead. Right. Okay, and Owen? 
that we are saved, that we belong to him, that we can be forgiven of our sins. All of those things, right? Okay, thank you so much. Here's what we're going to do. There are some papers on the table. You get to take one home. But don't leave yet until your parents come down. Or, uh, oh, and you may go, yes. But uh, if you're going to stay until parents come, stay in your seat.